Hi, everybody. I'm Brian Mudd, a fan of South Plains politics. Here's your talking points for this week. 254 Texas counties, and the governor wants coronavirus testing in every one of them. How do you do that? You call in the National Guard. We'll take you inside their rural operation. And how many of you have received your stimulus checks? Rural hospitals are starting to get theirs as well. They're an important part of the health process during and after this crisis. From the studios of KMAC Television in Lubbock, your local election headquarters. This is Talking Points with Brian Mudd. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Also this week, The Gamble. You can quote all the coronavirus case numbers and follow all the money and political power gained and lost. But at the end of the day, where the virus craziness takes us depends on your behavior and my behavior. The local and state leaders are betting that a majority of us will do smart things especially now that hair and nail salons and the like have reopened. What they're also betting is that there, if there becomes a problem, then state and federal experts can quickly move in and cool off those virus hotspots. For example, health experts, the National Guard, first responders, joined up with doctors from the Centers for Disease Control in Amarillo this past week, working at the meatpacking plants where hundreds have tested positive. We would really encourage our citizens to not travel to Amarillo right now that'd be first and foremost that they're you know it's it's their situation although centered around a, a couple of meat plants and a, and a prison there's a lot of community spread also and and do the things we've done here locally particularly with our nursing homes and once you identify the problems let's build a fence around it let's get those people well when they're well the community can start to get well Again, they expect higher case numbers as testing expands and more businesses open, making quick responses, if necessary, even more important. Our Eugene Cho looks at the work being done by these surge teams. State officials say the surge response teams have been deployed 47 times already. They'll do things like provide more PPE, more testing supplies, and they will work to enhance health care capabilities in those areas. Governor Abbott says the teams have gone to nursing homes, prisons, and meatpacking plants, but they're ready to deal with flare-ups of COVID-19 cases anywhere. It could be a particular zip code. It could be an office space. It could be related to a school setting. It could be any type of setting. As more places reopen and more people interact with one another. Bottom line is we don't know exactly what's going to happen, of course. That's always the big question. Thanks to people limiting contact, there's plenty of hospital capacity. But clusters of cases, especially around people who've been working at essential businesses, do exist. We are working uh, to, to do some targeted testing at, at construction sites as well because we know that's a hot spot right now. The Texas Medical Association president tells me opening up slowly is the right way to go, but there are still issues with testing capability and the supply of personal protective equipment. And of course there is more and more testing, but there's not nearly enough available yet. Uh, we're not out of the woods yet in terms of getting uh, a clear line of sight on all of the equipment that we need and just a wide open supply chain. Just because things are reopening doesn't mean that the risk of getting coronavirus has somehow decreased. That is Eugene Cho reporting. Our friend Jeff Griffin this is the city councilman for District 3 and is good enough to stop by and talk to us. Man, it's good to see you. Someone asked me the other day, is there any sort of plan B that has been discussed whether if in a month or six months from now or whenever we get this sudden rush of cases and we have to quickly shut down everything or some sectors or school or something like that. Do you think that far ahead economically, a uh, 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 health standpoint? We try to. Yeah. Uh, that it is difficult because if you had a, if you just had a bump mm -hmm. or if you had a real spike again, I think that would change it a lot. But yes, our health care professionals are thinking about this. Um, and uh, they worry about it every day. I mean, yeah. this is an everyday issue, of course, for everybody that uh, uh, in the concern for the economy. It, uh, that is just as important, in my opinion. Yeah, sure. And, well, and look, you're also one of those folks who are seeing this as a, a councilman and as a business owner as well. I mean, because how's that process been for you? Because you have employees to think about the whole thing. I've been blessed because my business was considered essential, so okay. we've been open the entire time. And uh, But you do worry about it every day. Mm -hmm. The first day you, you reopen and every, you've got all employees wearing facial coverings and yeah. washing hands and 
anything in the showroom that's touched. Uh, you worry about c customers, and I, my business, we send people into consumers' homes. Mm -hmm. So we have to be extremely careful. Right. You, you, how bad is the overall revenue loss from, from a, a sales tax perspective uh, expected to be for the city at this point? And as we get into thinking more about the budget process, too, because you, we're along those lines now, and that's going to be due before we know it, are we anticipating cuts? How is this going to work now? Great question. First of all, sales tax, of course, is the biggest revenue for the city of Lubbock. Right. It's going to be the biggest loss of revenue uh, as we go through this summer. Uh, our city manager, our CFO, we've been studying this at great length. Uh, we believe that our sales tax shortfall will be between five to five point six million dollars. Mm -hmm. um, that's what we think right now. Um, we do have hiring freeze in place, with the exception of public safety and public health. Yeah. So it's a, just just to be clear, if we have a public safety. Uh, opening that needs to be filled, a, a public health opening needs to be filled, those jobs get filled no matter what? Absolutely. Okay. But other departments, if there's vacancies, they stay vacant. Right. Um, that's a savings. Uh, all travel and training, that's a savings. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a discretionary spending uh, amount of about a little over $2 million. Mm -hmm. That's stopped. Cash capital plans stopped 3.2 million. So in the general fund, Brian, we think that we can save over seven million dollars. And that ain't hay. I mean, that, that that's big time. So that would uh, keeps the city running. We still have this. This goes without affecting our basically what the state calls a rainy day fund, right? Which is our reserve accounts, mm -hmm. water department and uh, LPNL, those accounts, we have reserve accounts that those aren't affected by this. This is, doesn't affect those. Will there be projects put on hold just, just, just as a discretionary measure just to make sure you're covered on all these things? Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Do we know what those are yet? Well, there's a few that uh, are listed here, but some of them are parks and rec. Uh -huh. uh, those are first to 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 hold be, off on. Yeah, to yeah. And just, there's just, some that are in. And just so notes. everyone knows, he, he brought some notes, so we're, we're sort of referencing them to make sure we have all the information right here. So that's good stuff to know. So parks and rec kind of things are yes, the first first absolutely. to go on the list. Okay. So we'll, we'll expect those, and and I I think people generally have been pretty. Not so much. You wouldn't know it always on social media, but people have been relatively positive about saying, "Okay, there's some things we're going to have to go through here for a while, and we have to expect this for a while." But then, we'll, hopefully, at some point, we get back to normal, right? Have you yes. heard the same thing? It, it's going to take time. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, we'll start our budget for next year, uh, next month, and start analyzing for the following year. Right. So the budget will be really tight. We we know that. But I do want to tell the citizens, the city of Lubbock's in good shape as far as public safety, public health, streets still get done, mm -hmm. and we are a water, wastewater, Lubbock Power Line is in good shape. Good. So uh, as we evolve through this problem, uh, I feel like that we're, and especially with the reserves we've got, I believe that we're in very good shape. Final seconds. Give, give some. Give us some other good news. I know we started the move-in process finally over Citizens Tower. That's got to feel pretty good. It does. There's still a lot of work to be done. It's about, uh, I believe, 50 percent uh, occupied today. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll be heading there uh, shortly. But it's uh, a dynamic building. I think our citizens will be very proud of it. Uh, there's still a little bit more to be done. But uh, it's looking great. I hope I like you'll come it. visit. Well, we'll do it as soon as we can, you know, they'll allow us in without, uh, you know, full body coverings and the whole thing. Right? We'll Sorry. give you a tour. There you go. Jeff Griffith, a councilman for district. Good to see you. Thanks good, for good having me, Good luck. Brian. Thanks for getting through all this. Thanks for, for coming in. Thank you, sir.